Hello all, my name is Sanjay Singh and I'm working as a RF optimization engineer for the 5G. So here I am going to discuss today about the 5G interview question and answer. I already discussed in the previous video that where I almost covered more than 18 questions. So hope you already watched that video. If not, then I will provide the link of that video in the video description so you can watch that. And today I'm going to discuss some more questions that can help to crack the interview. So let's start. First question of this video or you can say uh, the 19th question of the series of 5G interview question and answer. So this is the question. What is the difference between active antenna and the passive antenna? Okay. So both are used in the 5G. This is the antenna where uh, radio modules RRU or RRH are already inbuilt inside the antenna and this is the another antenna where the radio module is connected to antenna via the fiber cable or the jumper cable. So active antenna is those whose radio and antenna are inbuilt like this is the active antenna and where passive antenna is like antenna connected to the radio via the fiber or the feeder cable. So this is the passive antenna. Next question is how much data speed is in 5G? Okay, so peak data rate in 5G is 20 Gbps in the downlink and 10 Gbps in the uplink uh, as per theoretical. But as per the practical, uh, this is the as per like user experience data rate, it is the 100 Mbps in the downlink and 50 Mbps in the uplink. Next question is what are the CU and DU in 5G? So CU is centralized unit and DU is distributed unit. Okay. So uh, in the 5G, uh, we can say our base station. See this picture. So this is the radio unit and this is the baseband unit and this is the core network. So in 5G, baseband unit or the BBO is divided in the two parts. One is the central unit CU and one is the distributed unit or the DU. So in this picture you can see this is the RU. So it is the same but BBU is divided in CU and DU and this is the core network which is also the same. CU and DU that called uh, that, that is introduced new in 5G and uh, a, a CU can host more than 1800 DU. But DU uh, can host up to 6 cells in one time okay and uh, du includes both baseband processing and rf function next question is which sub carrier spacing is a good so you know uh, you know like in 5g we are using multiple uh, sub carrier spacing so sorry this is the bandwidth it is wrongly mentioned in here so uh, in 5g we are using the sub carrier spacing uh, like the 15 kilohertz 30 kilohertz 60 kilohertz and 120 and 240 kilohertz these are the sub carrier spacing we are using in 5g so which one is the good 15 or 240 so to understand this one you can understand from this these are the carrier spacing here uh, from here you can see like this is not correct but it is the correct one sub carrier spacing okay so each sub carrier spacing have uh, own uh, symbol duration so 15 kilohertz sub carrier spacing symbol duration is 66.67 and for 30 kilohertz, this is the 33.33. For 60 kilohertz, 16.67, 120, 8.33, 244.17. So you can see where we are using the uh, low sub carrier spacing means 15, where uh, symbol duration is high. But where we are using high sub carrier spacing means 240 kilohertz, our symbol duration is low. Okay. So both are important. We cannot say like uh, low uh, sub carrier spacing is good or the high sub carrier spacing is good. Both are important. Depends on the requirement. How we can come to know this thing? A smaller sub carrier spacing means 15 kilohertz have longer symbol duration. See this symbol duration is longer, which allows support for larger larger cell range. So if we want to provide the coverage for the longer distance, we have to use the 15, carry, 15 kilohertz subcarrier spacing. And here for the larger subcarrier spacing, larger subcarrier spacing means 240, 120 or 60 like that, have shorter symbol duration. These symbol duration are shorter than this one, okay, which allows support for lower latency. So if we want to provide the lower latency, we use we need to use the 
higher subcarrier spacing but if you want to the uh, higher throughput so in this case our higher throughput or larger cell range then in this case we have to uh, uh, look on the subcarrier spacing of the lower one okay next question is which ship carries the 5g logo this is the important questions uh, this question also can be asked uh, in the interview like uh, which ship carry the 5g logo in the handset in the mobile in the uv so you your answer should be ship 2 it will carry the 5g logo next question is what is the difference between 5g sa and nsa see this is the basic question but i thought to include uh, this question as well in this video so sa means standalone and nsa means non standalone so this is the picture for the nsa and the sa you can see you can see here in the sa case we are using the 5g core but in the nsa case we are using the 4g core so this is the major difference okay now next question is which three element are key in 5g use cases so this is also very important we need to remember because this is introduced in the 5g only so one is the EMBB that is the enhanced mobile broadband these, these are the quality type of the services also you can say second one is the URLLC ultra reliable low latency communications next one is MMTC massive machine type communication so these are the three key element of the 5G use cases next question is what is the latency of 5G for EMBB and URLLC okay so for the user plane uh, we know in the 4G and 5G both we have the user plane and the control plane okay so in the user plane uh, for the EMB, EMBB get the latency of 4 millisecond and for the URLLC that is the uh, ultra reliable so where we can get the higher uh, latency that is 1 millisecond for the uplink and downlink both but in control plane this is uh, uh, like uh, the 20 millisecond for the EMBB and URLLC. So control plane both are the same. Both uh, latency is same. Okay. Next question. What is the role of SMF and UPF in 5G? You know SMF and UPF both comes in the 5G structure. See this is the SMF and this is the UPF. So FM, uh, sorry, SMF smf role is used for the ip address allocation okay and upf it is used for the packet forwarding okay next question what is the advantage and disadvantage of 5g sa deployment option 2a so this is the for the sa deployment option 2 is the best option that is already uh, used by the many operators and uh, so we must know like what is the advantage and what is the disadvantage of this deployment option 2 okay so see this is the deployment option 2 in this deployment uh, we can see this is the uv and this is the nrg node b and this is the core network of 5g so that's the reason it called the stand alone and this is the option 2 so in option 2 advanced let me discuss first advantage so introduction of the 5g base station and 5g core network in one step so core network and 5g node b both came in uh, one step like together so this is one advantage and a brand new 5g base station and 5g core network if both are brand new brand new means both are uh, came together then it can support all new fun uh, new functions and services introduced by the 5g network so whatever the 5g services or everything we can use here every function and every feature it can support option 2 so this is the advantage now talk about the disadvantage so disadvantage is 5g network has a relatively high frequency than lt okay so it is difficult to achieve continuous coverage during the initial deployment it means when we are deploying in initial phase uh, we are putting let's say here is the 5g site let's say this is the 5g site okay it providing the coverage it here and you are putting another site here 4g uh, sorry 5g another site here 5g so when a user move from here to there uh, most of the times it will uh, log with the 4g network 
so this is the drawback in initial days but it, it drawback will be over when we deployed the 5g network entire the nation okay but initial days we will not going to deploy every every steps everywhere 5g network right uh, we will deploy some places and where we found the highly clutter so we will give the first priority those sites and later on in the next phase we will implement or we will add more sites so this is one disadvantage uh, like uh, uh, there will be a lot of switching between 5g and 4g network so when you we move to the uh, 5 uh, 4g coverage area it will less to the 4g because 4g coverage will be higher than the 5g which will result in a poor user experience. So user will get the poor experience. So this is the one drawback. Another one is the initial deployment cost is relatively high because we are going to deployment entire 5G things like core network and G node B. So it cost will be the high and the existing 4G based station resource cannot be effectively utilized. And whatever the existing network we are using for the 4G, those resources, those hardware we cannot utilize here. So this is another disadvantage of the 5G. So these are the questions for the 5G uh, interview question and answer in the part 2. I will discuss in some more questions part 3 and part 4. So thanks for watching this video and uh, I already have some more videos related to the 5G Nokia Air Scale hardware, 5G NSA accessibility improvement KPI, 5G drive testing parameters, 5G KPI's name and 5G carrier aggregation. So please visit to my channel and search these video and you can find and uh, it will help to understand 5g more in details so thank again for watching it